Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would answer a question uh, that I've been asked frequently when it comes to fitness standards. People are like, why do you always mention strength? Why do you always set strength standards instead of conditioning or endurance standards when it comes to fitness? Like, why is that what you seem to focus on more for health? And that's a great question, and I'm going to answer that. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skill at my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. And you know, when I do that, people have this misconception because again, people like to have this black and white thinking, you know, uh, it's, it's gotta be one way or the other that you can't have any compromise. And they assume that I'm suddenly anti-conditioning or cardio when I'm really not. Uh, I think cardiovascular conditioning is actually an element of our overall fitness and health. Uh, I think it does matter, right? I do think it matters. But what I want people to stop and think about I want to create a thought experiment here. Like if you had to actually gamble a lot of money on health outcomes, like I mean serious money. Uh, and so with, when I see a thought experiment, I don't mean, you know, thought that hoe over there. I mean a thought experiment. So if we create a th uh, this hypothetical scenario right now, you are going to have to gamble your personal money. And I want people to think of it in that perspective, not just random guesses, like a, a Create this scenario in your mind when you actually ask this question about health and longevity and fitness and all of these things. Because we're not just talking about how you look. We're talking about actual health and fitness here. How long do you live? Are you going to die of cancer? Are you going to have diabetes, right? These sort of health problems, serious stuff. Are you going to get Alzheimer's? All right, there we go. That's, that's what we're getting to, isn't it? So take this, this hypothetical thought experiment. And imagine that each one of these questions that you get right, if you were to get $1,000 deposited into your bank account right now, and every one of them you get wrong, $1,000 would be subtracted from your bank account and you have to play the game, meaning you can't opt out. Like you're forced to play this game and your money's on the line whether you want to play the game or not and you have to pick answers. Look at it from that perspective and base it upon what we know of every single study on human physiology, health, longevity, disease, exercise, the t sum total human knowledge on this stuff right now that we have available. Out of all the stuff, you can go read yourself. If you don't have the answers to this, go do some reading and look at the actual data and then base your gamble on that. And so let's say a scenario was created to where some scientists 45 years ago took a bunch of 20 year olds, random people, Random ethnic groups, random backgrounds, random uh, socioeconomic status, right? Every Everything, completely random. And they took 100 people in each group starting at age 20, and for their whole life they were only allowed to do one type of exercise. And you do not control for anything else. Uh, so let's say, we talk about leg strength, full body exercise that is leg dominant. Let's say the barbell squat versus true endurance, or jogging, not sprinting, jogging. Jogging is, is really, really a perfect example of true endurance work. I mean, if you can jog for two hours straight, that's an actual endurance, right? Two hour jog is endurance. Uh, barbell squat represents total body, but leg focused strength. And let's say for the next 45 years, these people had only been allowed to do squatting, barbell squatting with a barbell, uh, with various, whatever various forms of progressive overload they wanted to use, but that was the only exercise they could do. And they had to exercise of some type two, three times a week or they jog, the two groups, right? So you've got the people who spent 45 years from the age of 20 to 65 doing nothing but barbell squats, again, various rep ranges, programs, whatever they wanted to run, any sort of training program, or jogging two to three times a week. For 45 years from the age 20 to 65, and you were to have to go through, and then they, they measure the health and longevity of all these people, all these factors, and for every one of these answers, if $1,000 of your money was either on the line, like be taken out of your bank account, running you into a negative, to which you would have to pay off later, overdraft fees and all that if you don't have it in there, or it would just ma be magically deposited into your account. You get $1,000 for each one you get right. Which group would probably have, if you, your money's on the line, and you got 100 people, that gives you a pretty good demographic and no other controls are put in place for their lifestyle. Nothing is controlled for their diet, anything else. How many people would probably have more cancer out of which group? Would the people who did just squats probably have a lower cancer rate or would the people who just did running have lower rates of cancer? The answer would probably be the squats. They will probably have, based upon the research, lower rates of cancer. 
How many of them would have died of cancer by age 65? Again, a thousand dollars of your money would be on the line if you got it right or wrong, or a thousand dollars earned. Which one would you say? We know people who resistance train survive cancer at a higher rate than other people. People who resistance train are statistically associated with surviving cancer once they are diagnosed with it versus people who never strength trained. And barbell squats are among the top because leg strength matters more than upper body strength for this stuff. The squat group would have most likely less cancer deaths in that 45 years. How about diabetes? How many of them would be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes? Lifestyle induced, not the one you're born with, type 2. The squats would more probably have less instances of diabetes. So that's already $3,000 potentially gained or lost based upon just this question of strength versus endurance for health and fitness. What about Alzheimer's and dementia? Like how many of them would actually have been diagnosed with some form of dementia or Alzheimer's if we go upon the research that we have only? The squat group would probably have less cases of Alzheimer's and dementia. That's based upon the research. Which group, if we were to run them through a DEXA scan, would have the highest bone density at age 65? Uncontested. The average would be enormously higher for the squat group through their whole body, their legs, their spine, everything else. They would actually have stronger spines, stronger hips, all they would have better bone density. The squat group would win by an enormous margin. Uh, so we got bone density. How about cases of osteoporosis? The squat group would have higher or lower cases or would the running group have more, more cases of osteoporosis? The squat group would have less, almost guaranteed. How about cardiovascular disease? That one's actually up in the air. That's the only one that we wouldn't be able to guess based upon the data. It could be either direction. That one is, is contested. So when we're talking about fitness here, what are we talking about? I don't know, not dying of cancer, not being diabetic, not dying of a heart attack at a younger age, not dying of a heart attack before age 65. Uh, having better bone density, not needing crutches or, or a walker to walk when you're in your 60s or 70s. How about lower rates of hip fracture? How about retaining more of your spine, more of your height? Every single one of these, the strength training wins out. Every single one of them, except for maybe, except for maybe cardiovascular health, heart health. And that one, both groups do seem to have a benefit. You guys, see, you guys see the point here? Now, and we talk about, well, what if you do need some cardio? Well, then do some cardio. But truth be told, what do we know? Which one carries over to the other one better? In other words, if you took someone and they did nothing, they did nothing but squat for three years and another group did nothing but run for three years of random people, and then you had them cross over and add the other one in, which one would be better at both at the end? Meaning, let's say you had three years of people who just did squatting, who did no running, and then after three years of getting stronger on their squat, you have them start running, and they spend the next year both squatting and running at the end of that four years, versus you took another group of people who just did running for three years, and then they added in squats the final year, and they did squats and running for four years, which of those groups would have better strength and endurance at the end? Anyone care to guess? I can tell you right now, the group that squatted for four years is going to be a hell of a lot stronger than the group that squatted for one. And the group that squatted for three years and then ran for one might actually surpass the running group at endurance. If they've had a full year to add endurance training in after they built a strength base and ran proper, proper strength training on a squat, they would probably be just as good. They will at least equal the other group in endurance, if not exceed them, because they built a higher work capacity. Humans train endurance really, really fast and effectively. Strength comes slower to us. The group that built the strength base and then added the endurance in the last year will probably be more well-rounded athletes, will probably have better overall fitness, will probably have better overall athleticism, and they will probably run just as fast, if not faster, than the running group while being stronger. The other way doesn't work. Running doesn't improve your strength very much, but strength training can improve your running. 
So when we get into the, the situation here of uh, which one needs to be your priority, if you want, if you actually wanted to be more well-rounded, let's say you wanted to be really strong and be able to run really well for a long distance, where would your focus need to be to get the best of both worlds? You would want to focus more on the strength. The strength has better carryover. So again, when we're talking about overall fitness and health and everything else, strength training is king. It doesn't mean that, that cardiovascular fitness doesn't help because, hey, we go to that heart attack rate. Guess who has the lowest rate of heart attacks? People who do both. Right? I mean, in perfect health situation, uh, you, you would be good at both. But if you could only pick one, the strength training wins hands down. And if your strength training, it carries over to your work capacity on your endurance pretty well, you may not need as much endurance work to actually get to your endurance goals as a result of it. Uh, that's something that people need to think about because of, of resistance training and strength in the way that it builds work capacity. That's been looked at and analyzed a lot in recent years, right? Strength actually does impact your work capacity and your ability to actually do conditioning and endurance work. It can help you with it. It won't always build the endurance itself, but it will facilitate building it easier. So it's a win-win. So when we talk about this and people say, why do you focus so much on strength when talking about health and fitness? Should be very obvious. Should be very obvious. And you know, people will take that out of perspective. I don't want people to say, oh, so that means you should just get really, really fat so you can get as strong as possible. No, I didn't say that. Didn't say that at all. But uh, all right, guys, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.